The fifth verse. I got ten minutes. I got ten minutes. Matthew the seventeenth chapter, fifth verse. Um, uh, when you have it, I know you have it because you'll be standing with us, which is customary for the reading of God's word in this house. We stand just to read God's word. Matthew the seventeenth chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. With your Bible in hand, just repeat after me: New day. Day. Equals new mercy. Equals new mercy. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And hearing by the word of God. Text simply reads like this: While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them. A voice from the cloud said, "This is my son, in whom I am well pleased." Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's enough. Uh, you can take your seats in the presence of God for the next. For the next nine minutes and 58 seconds, I just want to preach from this title. When your father is proud of you. Hallelujah. Got nine minutes and 47 seconds. George. Mallory is a famous mountain climber who died attempting to reach the peak of Mount Everest. He may as well have been the first person to ever successfully climb and reach the peak of Mount Everest. So George Mallory is forever etched in history as the one that accomplished this amazing feat of climbing and reaching the peak of Mount Everest. While this feat was indeed impressive and amazing, it took a great toll on his family. In the introduction to the book, The Last Climb, George's son, John, who was just three years old at the time, recounts of not the achievement, but of his sadness because his father died in his effort to reach that peak. His son wrote, I would so much rather have known my father than to have grown up in the shadow of a legend and who you perceived him to be. Amen. There's always this lingering and unsettling feeling that exists around tough paternal relationships. Father's Day, I don't have to tell you, is not on the same level as Mother's Day. Father's Day, I don't have to tell you. <laughs> it's amazing to me how you can have two people who do the same job essentially, but not get the same emotional compensation for what they put in. Mother's Day, restaurants are shut down. You can't get a reservation to a good restaurant on Mother's Day. Father's Day, dad is expected to grow. <laughs> Mothers have amazing songs. The great Bishop Tupac Shakur has Dear Mama. I don't know what the whole group is, but you, they have I'll, I'll Always Love My Mama. Yeah, so y'all know it. What do daddies have? Papa! Papa! 
was a rolling stone. All he left us was alone. But I'm always like, what about the fathers that stayed? Even growing up in school, it was tough for me because I remembered how to spell mother. M-O-T-H-E-R, easy. I struggled spelling father. Now, I'll never forget one of my kindergarten teachers teaching me the way to spell father. She said, all a father is is a fat cur. That's how I learned to spell father. It was always fat. And, and, and y'all know the proverbial dad belly, dad bob. So most of the dads back then were. But as negative of a connotation, as fathers get. I wanted to take my last four minutes and 23 seconds to try to leave some kind of impression that your father did something good for you. Somewhere along the line, there's a good memory that you had of your father. No matter how tough the relationship, there's something good, I believe, that your father did for you. Book of Matthew, I, I'll preach it in a different way another day, but it's the 17th chapter, and, and, and the text says, uh, the first verse, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and, and led them up to the highest mountain by themselves. Hence my, if I were like really preaching this and I was going in and I wasn't in my slide in the third base gear, <laughs> I would make you a great, great connection between them going up to this mountain and what I opened with in my intro with that day climbing that mountain. Right? That's where I would take you. It's telling you where I would take you. Then verse 2 says, there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Verse 4, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, as Peter, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Verse 5, verse 5, we read together, verse 5, um, often lifted up, you've heard it so many times, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. There is something to be said, if I was in heavy preaching mode, um, I would change my voice right here. Just giving y'all some preaching insight, I would change my voice, I would, I would go into what you would call preacher voice. Y'all know preacher voice. I'll tell you, there's a principle in the text that suggests I'm going to preacher voice. Because um, I will tell you, there's something in the text right there that, that suggests to me that this is something we should look uh, uh, at. In connection with my title, when your father is proud of you, because here it is, in a moment where Jesus is highlighted, his father from heaven is letting them know, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Essentially saying, I am proud of you. You can never underestimate the importance of hearing that your father is proud of you. Amen. Can't underestimate. My father did a great job of telling everyone else <laughs> that he was proud of me. We would tell anybody that would listen. So I learned later. But I didn't hear it a lot. So one of the things that I try to do a lot, which I started in my intro with talking about you, I try to tell my kids how proud I am of them. Proud, like proud. It's a, 
That's proud. Stand back and you look with appreciation. You're proud of them. And 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 I text. Uh, uh, I, I try to remember people that that helped change my life. And y'all might not know him, but his name is Pastor Lester McCorn. Mm -hmm. Pastor Lester McCorn, pastor Pennsylvania Avenue AME Zion Church, mm -hmm. eleven twenty eight Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, and, and when I was in seminary school at Virginia Union University, uh, in our, our going into our last year, the practical course that we had, you had to intern at a church that was not your home. Meaning I needed to leave Redemption Church where I was and go to another church to serve for a year as a part of my class. Well, bless God, um, if you look at me, you can see I don't dress like most preachers. They not slide in the third base. <laughs> so I wasn't initially and probably still not accepted in many preacher circles, which I was okay with. I understood. My, my call was different. But with that came a difficulty of me finding a place that would let me come in and enter. So I don't hold grudges. <laughs> but trust when I say all of your favorite pastors here, and I know I'm online, none of them would let me in. They all said no. Your favorite ones said no. I'm sitting at work one day, I worked at this company called Debt Relief back then, where uh, if you had a lot of debt, we would renegotiate your credit card payoffs. You know you can do that, I'm telling you, you can do that. You got high credit card balances, you can negotiate with the company a settlement payoff. That's what I was doing at the time. And I'm at work and I'm really distraught. I'm sick of this whole ministry thing because I'm like, hey, I'm young in this, I'm trying to get in this, where I thought it was so much love and appreciation. Why, you know, people would just be, hey, come on in and learn from us. And everybody was like, no. So I'm upset one of my coworkers, uh, Danielle Jefferson, one of my coworkers, I like saying names because it makes the story more real. Danielle Jefferson says, what's wrong? And I'm telling her what's wrong. And she said, my mom is on the trustee board at Pennsylvania Avenue AME Zion Church. Let me see if I can hook something up for you. So she talks to her mom. My mom talks to Pastor McCorn. Pastor McCorn calls me on the phone. It's like, hey, come down and meet with me. You can intern here. <laughs> and I'm like, I've never met this man a day in my life. And he's like, you can intern here. You can come here. Now, again, all of the people that my mother grew up listening to on the radio. Oh. <laughs> yeah. These great God-fearing people told me no. This man I've never met a day in my life told me yes. Could it be that sometimes you only need the right yes? yes. and a world full of no's to serve as your confirmation that you're doing what God wants you to do. <laughs> I'll come back to that next. So inside of there, I go intern with Pastor McCoy. Uh, I'm there for six months, and all I do for six months, I told y'all, some of y'all before, all I do for six months is pour water. That's literally my job for six months, is pour water. And I'm okay with it, I'm just happy somebody let me in. But I'm learning a lot. I get to go to the Tuesday meetings. I'm, I'm involved in stuff. He's letting me see things. But they never let me preach. They didn't even let me pray. It's like, dang, they don't even think I can pray. So we're sitting at a Tuesday meeting one day, and every fifth Sunday they were bringing a youth preacher. And I always felt bad because they were bringing a youth preacher from somewhere else, and I'd be sitting at the table. They'd be like, who's a good youth preacher we can bring in? And I'd be like, I know a guy. <laughs> and they was like, nah, not you. 
So one day, bless God, the assistant pastor, Michelle Miller, says, how about we let Dane preach? And that's how quiet it was in the room. They were scared. I'm going to call it what it was. They were scared. They were scared. Because I still dress like this. Had no idea what I was going to say. So reluctantly, they let me preach on October the 30th, whatever year that was, 2012, I think, or 2011, I don't know, one of the years. They let me preach. They let me preach. And I have been, been waiting to preach. You have been waiting for an opportunity. I've been waiting to preach. So I, I get up to preach, and I, and I, and I knew, I knew, I said, I'm going to get him. <laughs> And I knew off the break because I said, my title is a title that I stole from one of the great apostle, apostles, Uncle Luke. Oh. Them people faces. <laughs> it's like, I know he lied. And I was like, my title is Don't Stop. Get it, get it. And I said, every time I say, don't stop, y'all say, and then people love me from that day on. <laughs> but not only did those people love me, Pastor McCorn loved me. And from that day forward, any time that he was out, he left me to preach. Didn't sit well with some of the other preachers. <laughs> I'm saying that to say, I, I don't do a lot of the church connection stuff. Y'all know it's some of us not spiritual to be a spooky. I appreciate that. But I would refer to him as one of my fathers in ministry. Yeah. Yeah. During a, a tough period of, of time with me and my, my biological father, he stepped in and helped me a lot in a mentoring type way. Listen at how God works. My title for today was prepared probably three months ago. I get up this morning and I got all these text messages, Happy Father's Day, and I said, you've got to reciprocate some of this. Let me send a message to Pastor McCormick. Text of this morning, Happy Father's Day. Thank you for all you've done for me. You are appreciated. His response, and I can't make this up. Happy Father's Day. I'm proud of you. So even if you had a tough relationship with your father, there's something, somewhere that your father did for you <laughs> that should make you smile. <clears throat> All right, I said 10, I really meant 20. I gotta go, I got two minutes and 35 seconds on my clock and I'm gonna get there, I promise. Someone asked me the other day, are you proud of your kids and their accomplishment? And I said, what do you mean? He said, you raised three kids who all got Division I scholarships in basketball. Three. Three. We got four rides. We got a page of nothing. Not a book. Not a, not a pillow to sleep on. Nothing. And I didn't realize until that conversation how blessed that I truly am. that I get to be their dad. This is I'm done, I, I gotta go. Uh, if I was preaching, oh man, I would kill this clothes. Just so y'all know, I'm just telling you in advance. I would destroy this clothes. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna preach this on the road, and this clothes, oh, I would walk the stage with this clothes. I, I, I'm, I'm not in walking mode today. But I promise you, this clothes, woo child. <laughs> Story was told. Somebody get my mother. <laughs> She's 
folding the arms and legs. She's talking all service long. <laughs> I see it, Coco. I, I, we gotta go. We gotta go. We out of here by 11:30 today. Watch this. Um, story was told. A wealthy son, a wealthy couple had a son. The mother died while giving birth, and the father loved and raised his son. When the son got older, the son wanted to give back to his country, and the son went into the military. While the son was away, he died overseas. The father took this loss hard because it was always just him and his son. A few years later, a man knocked at the door with a package in his hand. He told the father that he had served with his son overseas and that his son was actually an amateur artist. His son had prepared many drawings and wanted his father to have them. It was one in particular that the, the son had made for his dad. The picture was ugly and terrible, but the father cherished that picture. The father owned a ton of wealthy paintings. He had millions of dollars worth of art. His son knew that and wanted him to have this picture that he created for him. Like I told you, it was, it was ugly and it was terrible. The father died a few years later and they were auctioning off all his things because he didn't have any heirs to leave it to. The lawyer put out something in the paper and, and, and news of the auction spread quickly. The people in the town knew how he had collected all of these great paintings and pictures. So they all came to the auction because they wanted these millions of dollars worth of stuff that the dad had, all these beautiful paintings. The lawyer had strict instructions to start with the picture that the son drew. Auction starts and he holds up this ugly, terrible painting. He says, we're gonna start the bidding at one dollar. Nobody bids. He said, we can't go to the next one until we do this one. We gotta get this painting done. We gotta start the bidding. Nobody bids. Finally, a guy walks in from the back and says, you know what, I, I, I like that painting. This guy just happens to be the guy who dropped the picture off to the father anyway. We heard they were auctioning off the stuff. He wanted to be there, he came in and he recognized the picture and said, I don't care how much it costs, I'm going to buy that first. So he settles on it. Auctioneer says, are you sure? I'm asking everybody else. Any, any takers? Any takers? Any takers? I, I mean, it's one dollar. Any, any takers? Going once. Going twice. One dollar. Going, going twice. One dollar sold to this gentleman. People are snickering and laughing. I don't believe he bought that ugly painting. Auctioneer stands up right after they hand him the painting. Says, auction over. People are mad and, and no, nah, I want to bid on this. I wanted this. I wanted this. I wanted this. I said, no, the auction's over. I had strict instructions from the father that whoever chose my son could have everything that I own. But I just came to remind somebody that God sent me on divine assignment to remind you that he left strict instructions that whoever chooses his son. All right, I told y'all if I was out, I would kill that close. Right, everybody's staying and everybody's staying in the same. Everybody's staying in the same. Oh man, that, wait till y'all see that old guy, that's gonna preach. And then the father said, I got strict instructions. Whoever chooses my son, have everything that I own. And they would tune up. Amen. That's what I had, that's, 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 that's what I would do. 
never want to leave you hanging. I promise you, I will tell you, I promise you, I will tell you uh, that your father, everybody in here, your father did, did at least one great thing for you. Created you. Amen. Created Amen. And your father in heaven not only created you, but continues to sustain you. I know Father's Day for some will never be what Mother's Day is. But my sincere prayer is that our appreciation level for fathers rises. I often call being a father a thankless job because you're expected to do so much. This and that, let me help you. Being a father is like being the offensive lineman of the family. Your job is literally to protect. And when you watch football, when you watch football, you never hear them say anything about the offensive linemen until they don't do their job. Oh, when the defensive lineman gets around and keeps sacking a quarterback, all you hear, that offensive lineman stinks. But when there's no sacks and the quarterback is standing up in Jersey pretty, you don't hear anything about the offensive line. Can you appreciate the offensive linemen in your families today? <laughs> Call them, tax them, cash app them, Venmo. What's the other stuff? I don't know. Sal, what else you said? Go old school. Put something in their mailbox. Tell them, check it. But let these dads who go every day protecting, know how much you appreciate the protection that they provide. Everybody grab somebody's hand, grab somebody's hand, we're gonna pray together, grab somebody's hand, we're gonna pray together, we're gonna pray together, we're gonna pray together. Every head bowed, every eye closed, I wanna pray more with you. I believe if you're praying this prayer for the first time or the one thousandth time, if you're praying with all sincerity, that God will come into your heart and say, y'all believe that. Just repeat after me, God, I thank you. Just for, being you. Just for being you. I ask right now, ask right now that, you that you come into my heart and save me. I believe you sent your son. I believe, you sent your son. I believe he died believe for, my for my sins. Rose on the third day, on the third day. With, all with all power in his hands. In his hands. God, thank you God, I thank for you loving me, for loving me and, keeping and keeping me and being the best father, the best father that I could ever have. In Jesus' name, amen. Loose those hands, hug about three people, put your arms around and put your arms around and tell them I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Five, three, five, three, five, three, five, three.